Okay, there's one part of Notion that completely separates it from every other app out there, and that's the power of databases. Notion is not just a note-taking app. It has the power to manipulate data in ways you would never think of doing in things like Google Sheets, Excel, or any other database app. In this video, I'll be giving you the introduction to Notion databases that I wish somebody gave me when I first started using Notion. Hi there, Vaigurji ka khalsa, Vaigurji ki fateh. My name is Manith Paul Singh. On this channel, we explore tech and how to use it to get things done and using Notion is definitely one of the most effective ways to get things done. When it comes to databases in Notion, there are really two ways you can use them and I really wish someone took the time to explain this to me earlier on. There's an active database and a passive database. Active ones are the ones you actively use all the time. Things like a content calendar or a task database, you're going in there almost every day updating it, adding new things, checking things off, those are active databases. But there are also passive databases, and these are ones that are kind of working in the background. They're the backbone of your entire system, but you may not be going in them all the time. Think of it like your body. You have your hands and your feet that you're actively using every single day to walk and to do things, but you also have things like your heart and your stomach that are passively working in the background. You may not be directly controlling those two things, Things, but they are doing a very important job. Let me demonstrate this by doing an example. We'll start with an active database. We'll be creating a content calendar in Notion for things like making videos or whatever you might be doing for content related tasks. Let's jump into that. So I have a blank page open right now in Notion and I'm gonna create a new table under the database section. Once I'm in here, we have a blank database table which we're gonna manipulate and completely change to be much more useful for us. So I'm gonna keep the name section the same. I'm gonna change change the tags property to a date property and I'm going to rename that to publish date. And this will be the date that we use to publish our videos, the days we want to actually publish them on YouTube or actually release the content. The next thing we're going to add over here is a status property. And this will be the current status of the project that we're working on. So I'll name this status and we're going to change this property to a select property. And the last thing I'm gonna add over here is a checkbox property. And this will let us know when it's time to archive the project. Have we archived the project or not? So I'm gonna name this archived with a question mark. Now that we made all our properties, I'm gonna spend a minute just entering in some sample data for us to use. All right, I have some sample entries now made in my database over here. Just to show you how this would work, say I wanna update the script for my Notion databases video, the one I'm filming right now. What I would do is simply press on the title here and click on the open button, and now I have a whole page dedicated for this project, and I can type in the script for the video. I would do that for each and every one over here. That is how a database really works. But one thing that takes us to the next level Level is the different views you can have for your database. Right now we're in a table view, but let me make a board view. I'm gonna go over here to the add a view button, and I'm gonna add in a board view and hit create. This will change the whole look of our database. Now we have a Kanban board for our video projects. You can see it already has it nicely laid out. We have a filming section, an editing section, a scheduled for publish section, and a done section. So this Notion databases video, say I am done filming it, I can simply drag it to the editing section and now the status is automatically updated for that project. But that's just one view. Let's actually add in a calendar view now. I'm gonna go back to the board view section. We're gonna add a view and we'll do calendar. And now this is gonna show us all of our videos on a calendar so we can see very clearly when each video is scheduled to publish. But hold on, one more thing I wanna show you. Let's add in one last view over here for a list view. And this will show us all of our archived projects by adding in a filter over here. So I go to the filter section and I only wanna show the ones that have the archive checkbox checked. And now we see that one video come up, a very clean way of filtering out projects. As you can see, there's so much that goes into this. This is just one simple example, but I hope this gives you a general understanding of how databases work. This is a core example of a active database. Let me show you now what a passive database might look like. So let's jump into it right now. I'm gonna make a new page in my Notion over here called Relationships 
manager. And what this really is, is basically a tracker for all the meetings I have with my friends. Right now we're all living at home, working at home full time, and keeping in touch with your friends is basically a Zoom call every single time, or a phone call. So one thing I'm trying to do is keep track of all these Zoom calls and phone calls and take notes on all the calls that I have. So next time I have a call with one of my friends, I know what we talked about last time. But as you'll see in one second, this will actually take that one step further and will actually have even more information than just the notes that we took on the call. Let's jump into it. The first thing I wanna make over here is an inline table. And this table will be called the people's database. And let's type in people. And I'm not gonna do much in this database over here. I'm actually gonna delete the tags property over here. We don't need that. And we're, we're just gonna have the people tag over here. That's it, nothing more than this, just the people column, that's all we need. But the next thing I'm gonna do is create another database, another table that's in line, and we'll make this one the meetings database. And just right off the bat, let me explain what this will be. The people database is the passive one, and the meetings one will be the active one that we're actually actively going in to add in all our new meetings every single time we have a Zoom call. Now before we enter in any more information, let me go back into the people's database and add in a few names of some of my friends that I have that I wanna track in this database. Let me do that real quickly. All right, you'll see now that I have a few names in my people's database and I have the meetings database completely empty right now. Let's actually add in some more properties for that meetings database. So when I have a new meeting, I wanna track a few different things. The first thing is the date in which I have the meeting. So let's add a date column to this meetings database. The next thing I'm gonna do now is do something called a relation between the meetings database and the people database. This will allow me to choose the person I'm having a meeting with in the meetings database. I'll do an example of that in one second. Let me show you how the relation works though. I'm gonna add a new property like I always normally would, and at the very bottom under the advanced section, we have a relation. And I'm gonna go over here for select a database, and I'm just gonna search for people. And now that I have the people database chosen and create the relation, we're gonna see a couple things happen. Firstly, we have a new column that's untitled right now at the bottom for our meetings database, but also you'll see on the top for the people database, a new column was automatically added there too. I'm gonna rename both of these. So for the people database, I'm just gonna rename this to meetings. And then for the meetings database, I'm gonna rename this to meeting with. Now that we have our two databases set up, let me add in some sample data for meetings. So say I had a Zoom call over here, and on that Zoom call, it was on um, last weekend on the 6th, and I had that meeting with Dilpreet. And because I have this connection made, it's automatically gonna pull in all the names from the other database and allow me to choose the person of which I had the meeting with. So for this meeting, I had a meeting with Dilpreet. I'm gonna choose Dilpreet's name by typing in Dilpreet and it'll come up as an option now. And I'm just gonna choose that name and now automatically on the top where Dilpreet's name is, it'll show the Zoom call that we had for that meeting. And let me just add in some notes. Say we had a meeting and we talked about hanging out next weekend. Dilpreet recently got a new job. Just some basic notes so I could recognize them next time I talk to Dilpreet. And now let me go through and add in a few more meetings as sample entries from previous entries from other people. All right, now that I've added all my sample entries into the meeting database, we have a few things happening behind the scenes. If we go to the top over here for the people's database, we automatically see all the meetings that I've had with each individual person. Because the relation was made between the meetings database and the people's database, it's automatically pulling in all the entries for each individual person. That is really cool by itself. But one more thing I can do is add something called a roll-up. Because we have the meeting dates assigned to each meeting that we had, I can ask Notion, hey, when was the last time I had a meeting with this person? And it could tell me that really easily. So let's go to the next property over here for the people database, and I'm gonna choose roll-up. This is also under the advanced section, and we're gonna configure this roll-up to ask for the property of date, and the calculation for this is gonna be showing us the latest date. And this will actually show us right away the last time we had a meeting with each of these individual people. So for Dilpreet over here, six days ago, Amrinder was three days ago, but Navjot was 22 days ago. So this will tell me I haven't talked to Navjot in quite a while. 
This is very handy information. And just again to reiterate over here, this is just an example. The people database is a passive database. Now that I have set this up, I don't have to touch it anymore at all. All I'll have to do now is add in new meetings as I have them, assign a date to them and choose the person and the people database will automatically update for me. This is all automated. These examples were just a glimpse into what's possible with Notion. By no means am I asking you to follow along and recreate these things on your own step by step. This is a very basic basic version, there is no right way of doing any of these things. In the future, we'll be going through my systems that I've made that I actually use every single day, and hopefully from that you can draw some inspiration to make your own systems. If you enjoyed watching this video, I strongly want to encourage you to check out my Getting Started with Notion series. I go through all the basics, everything from using the app for the first time, to formatting, to some more advanced things as well. Check that out, link on the screen right now. I will see you in the next video. But there are also ways you can use databases as a passive way, and those are things like, I forgot.